25 years ago today, this very day, Poland joined NATO. And some of you may remember I was very involved in that happening. And uh, I, uh, during that ceremony, the former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, made this following statement. She said, when we stand together, no force on Earth is more powerful. When we stand together, no force on Earth is more powerful. I believe that then, and I believe it now. And we see it in Polish-American troops serving side by side NATO and the eastern flank, including in Poland. And we see it in our commitment to strengthen NATO's collective defenses. And I want to pause here and note that Poland is spending nearly 4 percent of its gross domestic product on defense, much of it purchasing American, what, 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 American weapon systems and, and aircraft. And has double the NATO commitment, 4 percent. That's President Biden at the White House yesterday welcoming Poland's prime minister and president yesterday. President Biden praised Poland for its commitment to NATO, noting the country proportionally spends more on its military than any other member of that alliance. Joining us now is the United States ambassador to Poland, Mark Brzezinski. He was at yesterday's meeting between President Biden and the Polish leaders. Ambassador, it's great to have you back with us this morning. Um, Prime Minister Tusk came out of that meeting yesterday with a, a pretty direct and pointed message to Speaker Mike Johnson about aid to Ukraine that's being held up in the House. He said, in part, this is not some political skirmish that matters only on the American political scene. Mr. Johnson's failure to make a positive decision will cost thousands of lives. He takes personal responsibility for that. Ambassador, have you and other Polish leaders who are on the front lines, of course, of this conflict uh, have been able to apply any pressure to members of Congress to um, prevail upon them how critical this issue is right now? Willie, thank you for having me. Something remarkable happened yesterday. A Polish president and a Polish prime minister who themselves are on opposite sides of the political spectrum, traveled together to Washington to stand in solidarity with the American president and to convey to Congress, we need to get the security funding for Ukraine passed now. This is an existential threat. Putin will not stop in Ukraine. And the polls wanted to convey the message that we have done all you asked. We have conveyed weapons to the Ukrainians. We have taken in to Poland millions of Ukrainian refugees. We cannot leave now the Ukrainians standing on their own and allow them to lose. There is too much at risk in terms of European democracy and European security. And so that was the message to Congress. I also visited the Hill this past week. And what I saw on both the Democratic and Republican side is a lot of interest in getting this passed. And I'm hoping that this happens. Mr. Ambassador, Prime Minister Tusk certainly delivered that message yesterday. And whether it's going to be receptive to the Republicans, we're going to find out in the near future. But in Warsaw, you were on the ground, yeah. basically in a war zone. And my question to you is, do you get any sense of increasing feelings of trepidation from countries that abut the Soviet Union, that abut Poland, uh, in fear of, of Russia's appetite? for war, appetite for territory. Do you get any sense of a growing fear of that? Mike, in Poland, support for Ukraine is high, but there is a dropping optimism in Poland that the Ukrainians will win because of the lack of funding coming from the West. And, you know, the Poles have thrown everything at this because they are right next door. For the Poles, Mike, this is 1939. This is the invasion of Central Europe by a horrible, vicious foreign attacker, in this case, Russia attacking Ukraine. The video coming out of Ukraine is reminiscent of World War II. And so the polls ask, what do the words never again mean, if not this? If we do not stand with the Ukrainian people when they are being terrorized and pulverized, when we said that we would never allow this to happen again. Um, so there is a sense that 
this is a moment, a proving moment in terms of the way the West and particularly America is viewed. Are you people of your word and are you going to stand with the Ukrainians? Because what is at stake is freedom and democracy in Europe. So, Mr. Ambassador, Poland there next door to Ukraine, certainly in the initial months of this war, became a welcoming home for so many refugees. Um, give us yeah. an update, if you will, about refugees there. Are, are, are some, they're still coming. And if indeed the situation deteriorates further in Ukraine, if that USA does not get to Kyiv, what will that mean for Poland and its neighbors in terms of refugees, but also their economies? Well, you know, it's a very interesting question. Ukraine is a country of 45 million people. Poland is about 38 million people. Ukraine, uh, Poland's population has increased by a million people as this crisis has <laughs> unfolded because of the number of Ukraini, uh, Ukrainians coming to Poland and being placed into people's homes and apartments. You know, the border between Poland and Ukraine is 380 miles long. There are eight border crossings. And when the crisis broke out, we had a scientific understanding of those eight border crossings to be able to help the influx of Ukrainian people into Poland. What we did not expect were the lines of Poles driving to the border to pick up Ukrainians to take them to their homes. The Ukrainians literally ran into the arms of angels, of Poles, organizing on social media, orga organizing to go at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. to pick up the Adamyuk family at the Medica border crossing near Zeshov to take them to Bydgoszcz or Poznan, Poland. It was that much of a reactive mobilization of the Polish people. And they did that because the Poles feel safe and secure because they are members of NATO. But it was remarkable what happened yesterday in the sense that you had two Polish leaders come to Washington a little bit like before the, the beginning of World War II to say to Western leaders, there is something horrifically terrible about to happen here and we need you to be people of your word. And they stood with the American president, Joe Biden, and conveyed that to Congress. <laughs> And history will remember well Poland's role in welcoming those refugees from Ukraine in their hour of need. Claire McCaskill, we spoke in our last hour to your former Senate colleague, now the ambassador to Turkey, Jeff Flake. He said talking to some of his former colleagues and people on Capitol Hill, he was optimistic that the House eventually would get this aid to Ukraine. Unclear why it's taken this long or what's going to change to make them to do that. Not everyone shares his optimism. Well, let's not be confused here. There's only one person who is stopping the aid to Ukraine, and that is Donald Trump and his sycophants in Congress that are following his lead. And of course, we all know his allegiance to Putin and uh, what Putin represents, which is not the cause of freedom. Ambassador, my question to you, the former president has done a lot of damage in confusing people about NATO. And, and this idea that there are somehow dues and that, that somehow people yeah. aren't paying their fair share. Can you speak to that and how frustrating that is for all of our NATO allies, that that misrepresentation of what NATO is and how it operates has taken root in the United States? Sure. Well, I can simply report, Claire, from Poland and say that the polls this year will spend more on U.S. defense products than Saudi Arabia. And Poland doesn't have oil and gas. That is how important the defense build-out is because of Putin. Listen to Putin's words this morning. Invoking nuclear weapons, a nuclear power, invoking the president, invoking nuclear weapons, the president of Russia did that this morning. How unbelievably irresponsible. And of course, is the reason why Poland and others are building out. Poland will spend more than 4% of its GDP on defense products, exceeding the 2% requirement by NATO by double. And you see many other European nations catching up. Um, look, you know, I always say in Poland, Polska jest bezpieczna i Polska jest zabezpieczona, which any Polish American listening right now will know Poland is safe and Poland is secure. For the first time in the 200-year history of the American-Polish relationship, we can say that because Poland is a member of NATO. And the Polish leaders came to the White House yesterday to say to Joe Biden, thank you, President Biden, because when you were a senator, 
in the late 1990s. You worked with then Republican Senator, Chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Jesse Helms. So a Democrat, Joe Biden, working with Republican Jesse Helms to put aside political differences and to advance the strategic interests of the United States of a Europe safe and secure. It was a remarkable scene at the White House yesterday. United States Ambassador to Poland, Mark Brzezinski. Mark, thank you always for your time. And Mika says hello. Thank you, Willie. Thank right. you. Hi, Mika. <laughs>